Welcome everybody to the Broken Room Racing League. This is the GT3 Sprint Championship Season 12, Round 3, here at Barber Motorsports Park. We're in practice with 8 minutes 24 seconds left to go. And we're looking at uh, Trey Mistek, who's sitting P2 in practice at this moment. The times on the board are 121.194 out of Christopher Daniel and the Ford Mustang GT3. With Trey Mistak leading just behind by not off 0 0.017 difference on that driver in the McLaren 720S. Now, interestingly enough, Christopher Daniel, who sits P4 in the pro standings, sitting P1 in practice, with Trey Mistak, who is in P2 in the overall standings so far. This is a very uh, difficult track. We've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of drivers uh, lose the rear in turn one and two. Uh, you know, I would say five and seven. Also, some issues there coming out of nine and ten. Uh, even in the final sector, uh, when it comes around to that little bit of a carousel-looking thing into uh, the star tray finish, it's been. Very unique, unique challenge. Nicholas Mazza, who was leading practice overall for a long time, certainly dethroned at the moment in P3. He's in the Pro-Am class, as you can see on the indicators in that bright pink, is it, yeah, pink uh, accents. It signifies that he's in the Pro-Am class. Right now, um, Nicholas Mazza is P2 with Christopher Chairling in P1 in that, uh, class the pro-am class and a driver who should be up here and is not technically uh on the track at the moment but we'll go to his teammate we got steve mcallister who's doing p10 in the uh, am class championship but his teammate of caffeine global uh global motorsports craig carroll is leading the am class uh by a, a good margin of, of almost a uh, hundred points and uh, right now, technically speaking, with the, uh, the way that the uh, points change within the classes now, everyone fighting for their own positions, as well as the overall, Caffeine Global Motorsports is in P3 in the team standing standings, with Nicholas Mazza back over to him in P2 with SimCity Racing and his teammate of Chris Stewart who I hope is here, but he may not be. It's not going to go well for them if his teammate isn't there to collect some points. They've been doing pretty well the last one. They actually got the most points last race with 1,005 points on the board. Chris Stewart doesn't look to be there, uh, be here for this race. So the drivers running in P1 is Christopher Daniel and JD Daniel, no relation. Of the Pax Oceani, Ronnie and Clyde. I'm curious which one's Ronnie and which one's Clyde. With four minutes and 57 seconds to go, go over to the other drivers in the AM class. Uh, P2 and P3 is uh, Michael Oceans and Marshall Scari. Terry Burks in fourth and Blake Patterson in fifth. It's still pretty close there. As well as in the Pro-Am class, we have uh, Austin McGill in third, John Jackie in fourth, and Chris Stewart in fifth, putting SimCity Racing in two and five right now at the moment. It's really good uh, for them. Cooper McCoy was given a uh, mandatory uh, upgrade in the Pro-Am class, and he now sits in P6 in the Pro-Am class. And where it's going to really matter here is looking at Eric Neville, who's sitting P3. J.D. Daniels first, Trey Mistak is in second, and Eric Neville is in third. Christopher Daniel fourth, Jacob Simmons in fifth. Really high up there for the Pax Oceani, Ronnie and Clyde, and the Pax Oceani Potato Pop. Draft Punk Gold is sitting further split. Pax Oceani, Ronnie and Clyde have the one in 
uh, one and four spot, which Trey Mistak and Elliot Burton are significantly uh, more spread out. But, you know, it looks like Elliot Burton did not have a good race for him on the on Sebring, not collecting a... I think it did a decent amount of points, but based on what I saw in the first round, got collected in an incident of not his own. Uh, that was unfortunate for him. That's what really probably set him back, especially still able to claw some points away from that race, but still, when it rains, it pours sometimes for some drivers getting just collected into other events. And it looks like Matt Shack joins us in P14 at Sebring, but I don't believe he's here for this race, so we won't get to see him on the board. New drivers to think about. We have James Pierce. Uh, I'm not sure if he was in uh, Sebring. It doesn't show him up on my uh, information here, but new driver here. Maybe it's his second race. Maybe it's his first race. Dom Ford, also up there. He's in the Pro-Am class. But again, I don't see this driver on my sheets here. I'm going to blame Andrew Korstecki for that one. And uh, Chaz Mizuko, he's, he, he's raced with us a couple times now. This is his first season with us. He's got that really interesting livery. We could pay more attention to it. It's a dog box with a little dog on top. Uh, and it says puppy on board in the back there. Really, if there was a cutest livery on the grid, it would go to Chaz... Uh, Chaz Mizuko because that is what you consider cute at least get in the bottom of the barrel there guys uh, Michael Charon not new he's uh, in the pro uh, he's in the AM class we can see with the, the the bright teal or sky blue I think it's sky blue and he has Let's see if he set any points here. He's P11 at the moment in the AM class. And Colin Gar. Gare? Colin Gar is Gare. Yeah, first race was in Sebring. Didn't attend for the Watkins Glen race. But here he is. Another driver setting his de de uh, second race with us. But I would say my his debut on the stream as we have Christopher Roberts uh, also out here in the uh, has not put the the correct livery stuff on don't see him on here I believe he's one of the drivers that is actually brand new and welcome to Broken Ring Racing League uh, Christopher Roberts so P39 at the moment in practice is Joe here? Joe. Joe? I don't see a Joe. Maybe like a Joe Mama joke? You'd get me there if you said it. And practice is ending. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for that one. Uh, practice is ending. It's going to be a 15-minute qualifying session. I assume is because we've been having some very big grids. Uh, about 20 drivers have not opted. Well, 19 drivers have opted to not race on this one. This is uh, the champion's pick, Peter Flanner, who won the pro standings uh, last season in season 11. So I think it's an, uh, a wonderful track. Uh, it looks like it's got a lot of interesting things happening. Um, I'll get on to somebody in a second. Pax Oceani is here in force. You got... Oh. Well, you had for a second. You have the uh, Pax Oceani, Silly Gooses of John Javecki and Alex Offen, who are here. And uh, let's go over to somebody who's actually out there. Where is everyone? John Chevecki. There he's. Silly Gooses. Further up is Trey Mistak, the driver that is going to be extremely uh, 
scary to be against in qualifying. He is fast. Place second in practice. We're looking at 121s. There's only about 14 drivers in the 121s. Then we went to the 122s for about the remainder of the grid up until the 30s when it went from 123s and 124s uh, respectively. In the Pax Oceani, Ronnie and Clyde of J.D. Daniel, Christopher Daniel out there as well trying to maximize points they are p1 in the team standings at the moment in time as we uh as i get up to grips with uh yeah the internet here pax oceani uh, potato pop of eric neville and matthew baldwin is sitting p9 is matthew baldwin and Eric Neville here. Eric Neville is here. I don't know if Matthew Baldwin is. I don't think I saw him in practice. We have one, two, three drivers. So four drivers have yet to go out and uh, qualify. Could be because some of them might have... Oh, you are not... Oh, Dark Comet is Matthew. Hi, Matt. Finally get to see what the times on the board are going to look like as Trey Mistak is going to take us out there with the 121.6 crossing the line. Fastest overall. John Javecki going to second already. Uh, and then it's just going to be a domino effect. Where do people end up? Is that uh, Eric Neville with the fastest lap? A .004 difference to Trey Mistak there. Going over to Alex Othen, who's about to cross the line here. He does a 123. More or less. It's a, actually, that's yeah, it does 123. So that might be a banker lap for him. He's got Jacob Simmons, who's just behind. A driver who's been robbed of a few championships by a drop week. Finishing P2 a couple times in the championships here. Jacob Simmons, who has not set a time on the board just yet, but he is one of the fastest drivers at this track in practice in the top 10. What can he do? He's got that little bit of a toe right behind Alex Othen. Still not making anything up. We have 27 drivers who have set a time on the board at this moment in time. Nicholas Mazza going slow. Nicholas Mazza, for the longest time, had the fastest lap. Christopher Daniel now setting the fastest lap with a 121.5. We got these into the low 121s, so that half a second still somewhere to be gained across all of it. As I say that, Trey Mistak does it. There's a 121.261, and that is the time gained. We could see something even lower than that. A couple of drivers in the 121.1s. As Jacob Simmons crosses the line with a 121.6. It's going to be quick, but only fourth for him. And Tyler Anderson spins off here. Let's take a look at this replay. He was crossing the line. Oh, and loses it on entry into turn one. He'll have to sweep into the pits and get back out there. He is a driver to set a, a quick one and get himself in the top ten. He is a pro driver. And Matt... Benson, I believe he did all right in practice, but I'm, maybe it's the other. Oh, I'll go over it. We have James Pierce, who must have raised. I mean, he has pro. He has the orange accents to suggest he's a pro driver. He's racing at speeds of a pro driver, 121.8. We only have nine drivers that have been in the 121 so far. In practice, it was 14 drivers. So we'll see a few more kind of inch their way into that. Dom Ford just ahead, also part of the pro category, but 
Uh, I mean, I'm gonna say, are these two teammates? No. It's a 2 1 2 thing going on. Two one two racing. We don't have another entry in for the uh, for this one, so I'm not sure what that's about. Jacob Simmons or James Pierce crosses the line to go second fastest. Wow! And he's gonna call it there. Jacob Simmons, not to be outdone here. He's still going out there, and he's gonna to see what he can find. As long as he can find some time somewhere on this, and he only needs a. About half a second. Oh, four, four tenths of a second. And the, actually, we'll go over to Tyler Anderson, who has not set a time on the board. And he is in... This would be his hot lap. He's probably just got around the track now. And he's entering sector two. So this would be it for him. Navigating turn seven, it's very difficult here. It's got the left, right, down into eight. Decent straight away. And that little kink into nine and 10. And if you can keep this one without any off tracks, which few drivers have get their off tracks out here. Um, see where he puts it across the line. From not having a position to going P10 with a 122.034. He's got time to go again. Six minutes, 48 seconds on qualifying. Peter Flanner, interestingly, is in the pits. He has not set a time on the board. Jeff uh, Lubich, who is part of the Pax Oceani bronze team. With Eric Kuzman, also a driver who has not set a time on the board. This might be a drop week for some drivers as... Rodrigo Theory of Draft Punk Racing Silver is not here. But his teammate of Dylan Maroney is. Also, Jeff Lubitsch to the bronze and silver right next to each other in qualifying. That's not strategic. But it is nice to see. Trey Misek still leading us in the Pax Oceani. Uh, sorry, Pax Oceani. <laughs> My bad. Draft Punk Racing Gold. And is Elliot Burton here? This is definitely one of those... We're all running with some half teams tonight. Team members, their partner is letting them down. Trey Misak having to haul this one all on his own when it's a 1.25 times the point spread on this race alone. Jacob Simmons, the Bush's Baked Venus, who are probably not going to be able to defend their their team championship title here. They are the two-time Bushes Baked Venus winners of the uh, team championship. Sitting not plum last, but second to last in 16th. And Chris Lambeth has yet to set a an appearance here. And either race one or two or three. But hopefully he's cheering on his teammate in spirit. Because uh, he hopes to have his teammate do well. John Javecki going a little quicker on this last lap. As well as Christopher Daniel is. But who's to say? It's actually faster than his previous lap. Which was 123. So the comparative 
the comparison's really not there just yet. It would have, have to have been off the other uh, lap that he did that was faster. But we'll see. Nicholas Mazza's up there in P4. Setting his fastest lap, and he's quicker on this lap. He's got only a couple more corners to contend with to determine whether or not this is going to put him on the top step. He is marginally quicker on this one. And if it's even marginally, it's still going to put him just ahead as Christopher Daniel goes faster and gets to P2, overtaking James Pierce for P3, uh, who's in P3 now. Nicholas Massa crosses the line, and it won't shift for just a couple seconds, but that last lap... Ooh, invalidated! Yeah! Right here, folks. I'm not even... Oh, maybe too much curbing? Or on exit? But he... Picked himself up a little off track there. John Javecki as well as uh, picked up an off track. So it's Trey Mistak, Chris Chitterling, as Jeff Lubich takes P. What's that? P thirty six. Now, one to know is James Pierce. He's got to find the time. He's not that much uh, far off. Same with Christopher Daniel. I mean, 0 0.015. Talking thousands of a second here. That's not even hundreds, but thousands of a second. James Pierce, it's almost two tenths. It's one tenth, one and a half tenths. Not quite sure. Right now, Christopher Daniel is in the pit lane, so he might just call it with this P2 finish. As Dom Ford takes P7 and climbs up the ladder to overtake uh, Jacob Simmons for that position, who now falls to P8. And James Pierce does not improve on his time. He's gone in the pit lane, but Nicholas Mazza. What can he do? He's got a couple more corners left to contend with. It's that really long sweeping right. Almost like a carousel. down the start straight finish he goes is this going to be it for him he's got time to do one more and that last lap was not it for him Eric Neville crosses the line he's in P6 and he doesn't improve upon his time JD Daniels in entering sector 3 and Jacob Simmons has enough time to go again Entering sector one. JD Daniel. It's got a couple corners. Ooh, that might be an off track there, folks. JD Daniel, yep. That is an off track. I can confirm that. Tyler Anderson scooping up two off tracks himself. And yep, he's gonna go into the pits. There's not much more you can do. And it is over as Tyler Anderson's gonna go again. Is Shirling just a ahead? This is something that he can improve upon. Cooper McCoy crossing the line. Can Cooper improve? Can Chris improve? Cooper improves! Overtaking Alex Othen for P13. And just ahead is Michael Charon, who's in P28. But is it possible for him to make a up a couple spots here as he crosses the line?
does not improve upon his time. Jacob Simmons crossing the line does not improve upon his time. It's going to be a P8 for him. Andrew Korostecki across the line. He's in P15 at the moment. And that lap is not going to improve him there. Tyler Tears going in. So I think we have Mark Foley, who's the only remaining driver. Out there. And he's going to the pits. So that is qualifying. I'll uh, put that up in just a second as we uh, take a quick break. All right, everybody. You can see who's in P1 through 15. Jeff Koffold is in 16. Followed by Charles Weed in 17. Chaz Mizuko in 18. Brandon Renfro in 19. Dylan Maroney in 20. Eric Koonsman in 21. Lars uh, Lahus in 22. Tyler Tier in 23. Blake Patterson in 24. Sorry there, Lars. Uh, Tyler Tier, Tyler Kern in 25. Brandon G. Burns in 26, Scott Weber in 27, Michael Charon in 28, Eddie Layton in 29, Craig Carroll in 30, Kyle Howe in 31, Matt Benson 32, Eric Rodriguez 33, Forrest Holland in 34, Jeff Lubitsch in, uh, sorry, Dave Palmer in 35, Jeff Lubitsch in 36, Steve McAllister 37, Dustin, Gro uh, Dustin Geno Geno uh, Genovese, uh, G Genovese in 38, Peter Flanner 39, Colin Gar in 40 and Christopher Robertson 41. Bam. And that is the grid. Not a whole lot of shockers here out of uh what transpired in in the starting lineup from P1 to 15. Although Peter Flanner is in the back of the grid, so I'm not quite sure what happened there. Maybe he has a I don't know if he has any penalties um, that I'm aware of. But that is going to be quite some feat for um, that driver to start at the back and work his way forward. James Pierce possibly setting his first appearance in the second row as a pro class driver with a pro am driver of Nicholas Mazza and John Javecki. I believe that's John Javecki. Yeah. Two pinks find themselves in the mix with the pro class drivers. With great respect, I hope to see some really great battles as they hold position against some of the pro drivers that they're going to be surrounded near. As we take a full out, uh, full warm up lap here. Go further down the field here, see where we're at. Some people trying to warm up their tires. One might say they're not really pacing that well. <laughs> not going the safety car speed. <laughs> and what a long one, by the way. Barber Motorsports Park. Round three of the GT3 Sprint Championship here at Brokering Racing League. I hope you guys enjoy. I know I will. This is going to be a really interesting one. Nicholas Mazza, who is P4 in the Pro Am class. P2, or P2 in the Pro Am class overall right now. And he's sitting up there with the likes of John Javecki, who's on this, the third row. And they are in difference in the overall standings for the Pro-Am class, that pink group of drivers. You can see that pink uh, accent to his livery signifies he's in the Pro-Am class. The orange are the pros and the sky blues 
me find you a sky blue back here. I didn't mean, that's not a, a, sh a shot at you there, Eric Rodriguez, but you are sporting it. Uh, the sky blue of the M class. And look at that. Even that, you have a driver out of position. And that is no bueno. I'm not even sure which one that is. Hyperion Race, Eddie Layton. Whoa! And we'll take a look at that in a second. That was into turn one, and two drivers go off there, and that is J.D. Daniel, I believe. As we almost go three wide here. And that's James Pierce right there on the rear. And the Pax Oceani of... Uh, John Javecki also right there. Eric Neville just ahead as Trey Mistak leads with Nicholas Mazza in two. And Don Ford comfortably there in P5 as Shane Pierce is going to be swallowed up by a couple of the drivers. Max Oceani of Alex Othen and John Javecki looking to have a go. And John Javecki is going to stay ahead. That's Minus two for John Javecki off the start of this race. Up six for Andrew Corsecki, who just makes a move on Alex Othman. We said there wasn't going to be passing in practice, but there's some practicing happening right now. As James Pierce goes side by side with John Javecki. And James Pierce gets by, mitigating the damage there. As Nicholas Mazza, I'm sorry, as Jacob Simmons. And Eric Neville almost goes side by side into turn one as he lets off there. And Mark Foley's in the pits. Christopher Daniels in the pits. I'm not sure what happened there, folks. As it is just a train of the Pro Am drivers with a few pros in the mix. Further back you have, you can see Andrew Korostecki really pushing John Javecki now. And a lot of drivers back there. You can see Eric Rodriguez battling it out there. Peter Flanders already up 10 positions at the start of this race. Further back, we have drivers that are going to make some contact almost. And then Steve McAllister and Tyler Anderson. Tyler Anderson was involved in that. Uh, at least trying to mitigate some damage. And there goes J.D. Daniel also getting by. And Blake Patterson, who has spun. Ooh. Not collecting anybody and holding his line there. And that was possibly curbing. Yep. Right there. Unfortunate for him is he's going to get back out there live. Andrew Korostecki also had a spin. Take a look here. On exit, hitting the curbing. And yeah, it's unfortunate. He goes down. Get back out to the action. Chris Chitterling up five. Dom Ford up two. James Pierce still trying to mitigate the damage. He's in P7. Four loss positions for him. John Javecki also a couple losses. There is Eric Neville uh, in P3. Trey Mistak still holding out that P1 position with a solid lead of a 2.1 seconds to P2. And Eric Koonsman. Up eight positions. Ooh, so we go over to Jacob Simmons, who's going to go side by side with Eric Neville for P3. Doesn't look to go his way, and is he going to try to go on the inside line? No, he's already got Jacob Simmons down the start straight finish. They're going to go into turn one together. No, as Nicholas Madison now sets the fastest lap of the race with a 121.8. He's definitely going to try to make something happen there and attack Trey Mistak shortly. Chris Chitterling now closer than ever on Dom Ford. 
of the 212 racing just ahead of him. It might be embarrassing if that's a 7. Eric Koonsman and Chaz Mazuko going at it here as Eric Koonsman gets it on the inside line. And Jeff Koffold also might make a move here. I think he's just too far back. And Tyler Anderson down 20 positions now. How's he going to make up for this here? He's got Dave Palmer ahead of him and J.D. Daniel also ahead. J.D. Daniel's going to be doing exactly what Tyler Anderson's going to have to do. And let's make up some spots here, wherever he can. And I don't believe it's going to be in that corner. And we're going to hop over to uh, Chris Schitterling, who's got James Pierce now behind him. So if these two drivers are of the same uh, racing team, we got a 2-1-2 livery ahead. 2-7-2, two, two, I think that's a 2-1-2. Two, two. The Sherling goes ahead and takes it. Ooh, but there's a switch back from Dom Ford who stays ahead. And now James Pierce is two tenths away from this driver. instead of making that overtake stick is now even closer to to having to defend there's John Javecki about almost three seconds back there so we got some lap traffic already occurring that is that is something else I'll say Looks like there's a little bit of a, a give here. Blake Patterson in the pits already. Christopher Daniel is towing. That's unfortunate for him. I don't think he's going to be able to recover anything from this one. Now it looks like, based on what was happening there, Chris Schitterling is getting a little bit of a, a give here through Sector 1 and is getting a good gap from James Pierce, but it kind of closes up into Sector 2. We'll pop over to Peter Flanagan, who's just making a move there on Brandon Burn, Brandon G. Burns in that uh, Ford Mustang. Teal and black. That's 17 positions gained for him. Craig Carroll up 11. Way up there. That's fantastic. Whole grid back here is all wild cards. J.D. Daniels a few positions back there. And he's trying to make it. You can see he's that Pax Oceani there. P1 in the overall standings at the moment. That is definitely going to change with Trey Mistak leading this race in P2. As uh, Dustin Genovese uh, in the grass. And this is just a long line. And Eddie Layton is no slouch, he's in the Pro M class. It's going to be a difficult task for Peter Flanner to uh, get by him. So they have Michael Charon in P20s. He's doing really well. His times or his pace isn't bad. It's a 123.4. The driver at ooh, fully makes that move stick on entry. And Peter Flanner gets ahead. Another one he has to knock off there. These three are still stuck to each other like glue. Going further ahead, we have Dom Ford, two seconds difference to Jacob Simmons, who's ahead in P4.
and John Javecki and Alex Offen on different teams or on the same team. Oh, they're the Pax Oceani Silly Gooses. So P8 and 9 is going to be a, a big haul of points for that team, which is P11 in the championship at this moment. Interesting to see. A Chaz uh, Mizuko has a uh, Mizuko. It's Dylan Maroney there. He's just behind. He did, just did a 122.8, which is a bigger swing of difference here than the drivers ahead of him. Not behind. Tyler Tier is also pretty quick. Jeff Koffel runs this little train of four in P13 in the Valhalla livery. And maybe we'll see something in a second. Matt Benson pushing through and overtakes Steve McAllister. And there's Cooper McCoy in the pink accents on that McLaren. I think he's also going to get him. And woo, that was really close. But he gets by. Tyler Anderson looks to get by Kyle Howe for a brief moment. And that's going to be an off track for sure. And he's even in the grass. Tyler Anderson gets ahead, stays ahead. Eric Rodriguez gets by as well. And that's position scheme for him. Kyle Howe having to rejoin in an unfortunate manner there. And that's going to be a couple positions lost for him. Now it's open. Is Chris Shitterman going to make it happen this go around? No. He's, he's got power down on exit. This actually could be it. He's been battling this guy for lap after lap, and it's lap nine. Definitely doesn't got a full car that's there, and he's just going to have to remain behind again. And what an impressive drive for Chris Shitterman, who is in that pink accent. Uh, McLaren, all three of them are McLarens, but the difference here is that pink accent is signifying he's a pro-am driver sporting some really strong defense against James Pierce in the pro class as well as making an attack on Dom Ford. Possibly these guys are teammates. They're running the same livery with different colors to it. The 212 racing group. This could be their first race with us, I believe. I'm I mean, they could have been in the last race, but I wasn't here for that one. Uh, and a little too far back. And it looks like John Javecki is cutting that time down. And he is now 1.5 seconds back from this battle. Alex Offen, also uh, 1.4 from his teammate. And should this end disastrously, there's the uh, Pax Oceani Silly Gooses right there in the background ready to pick up some, some points, some positions as well from these drivers who have had a great race so far. Really, really respectful battles. Going over to Peter Flanner, who's finally going to make the move on Michael uh, Charon. Maybe not. Not yet. He's still actually behind this driver. So is J.D. Daniel um, also there. And Tyler Anderson in the back of that little pack. The driver's trying to get back into the fight. It is not on just yet. Dylan Maroney gets ahead of Chaz uh, Mizuko. Tyler Tier, can he do that as well? We'll pop out you over to Tyler Anderson. He looks to be closer closest driver on track to get ahead and he does so before the star tray finish and again there's another driver making a move is JD Daniel gonna be able to make this move oh no oh that's not a big deal okay for a second I was scared drivers were dropping down the leaderboard um Definitely make note, Dom Ford and James Pierce have gone in the pit lane. 
and they jump out at P27 and 28. The driver they were facing is Chris Chitterling. And at some point, maybe they thought, why are we battling with this guy when we can get some open air and just race it together on lap 11 of 33? We'll probably see some of these drivers stay out to lap 18 even. Who knows, but it's possible they can make it work. Eric Neville is now close to Nicholas uh, Mazza, and Jacob Simmons also joining the party here for P2 three and four. Trey Mistak extending that gap from the two second margin to now 3.1 to Nicholas Mazza. Hop over to Peter Flannery who gets ahead of Scott, uh, Craig Carroll. P17. It's 22 positions gained for the driver, and just further back we have Eddie Layton drops down one to Tyler Anderson, but still up seven in the start of this race as J.D. Daniel also making his way through, and that is going to be Michael Charon and P20. And the move is all but assured as Michael slots back in, and now it's going to have to worry about Tyler Anderson here. And Definitely has the power down for this next run, but is he going to have the space to get by? Looks like it, but they make contact slightly there. And this is not over. Ooh! And they make contact again. And Tyler Anderson goes through unscathed. Don Ford gets ahead of Eric Rodriguez. James Pierce has to contend with two of those drivers. Uh, Forrest Holland. He gets by, and now he's going to have to do the same on Eric Rodriguez. Let's see how that plays out there. As Cooper McCoy gets by uh, Michael Charm. He's definitely having to battle out here. He's down one position to start this race. He was doing very strong up until that spin. Really sent him back uh, a lot of positions there. It's unfortunate. I guess Scott Weber moving over on uh, Peter Flanner there. It's a pro am driver. Scott Weber. Understeer Anonymous. Hmm. Now we have James Pierce making the move on Eric Rodriguez. Oh, he does make the move. Flashing his lights a little bit. It's not left traffic. He's got to pass him naturally here. He finally gets through. As his teammate of Dom Ford is up 2.2 seconds. Now the stint is 14 laps, and no drivers have gone into the pit lane besides those two. Dom Ford and James Pierce, who quite possibly could be teammates. There's Peter Flanner on Tyler Kern. Sorry, yeah, Tyler Kern. Makes the move. That's 14. Uh, 24 positions gained for him. I honestly think this is a game for uh, Peter Flanner. He's just started from the back and now he's here p15 for him putting inside the p15s i'm starting it almost plumb last he has 40th 39th not qualified this race could be a race ban i don't look at the race penalties that well He's up. It should be said, we should look at the race leader here. This is Trey Misak, who's now passed up to P36. 
and has Jeff uh, Lubitsch 13 seconds ahead. It'll take him a significantly a while to get there. So we'll see a Jeff Koppel pass Eric Koonsman here. And Pax Oceani bronze driver. And Craig Carroll getting passed here by J.D. Daniel. Craig Carroll leading the AM class championship. Michael Oceans is not here. Michael Scarry is not here. Or Marshall Scarry is not here. I'm not sure who's really battling right now. Terry Burks isn't here. Blake Patterson and Eric Rodriguez and Forrest Holland are here, so they are battling out with this driver for position. We have Dom Ford now down to P23. Still no drivers ahead of him have gone in the pit lane as several drivers are on lap 16 at this moment in time. James Pierce also has Kyle Howe to contend with. As uh, Dom Ford gets ahead of Brandon G. Burns. Now, what a recovery for J.D. Daniel, who's in P18 at this moment in time. That's only down nine positions from where he started this race. And he gets ahead of Scott Weber. And as that happens, several of the drivers making some good overtakes. Eric Rodriguez has Forrest Holland in his sights and is looks to be on the inside line there. Matt Benson is behind lap traffic, and these Porsches are going to go side by side. And Eric Rodriguez isn't going to have it just yet. Maybe to turn one. I'm going to say no. It's going to have to uh, figure it out, but it's not going to be there. On a tear from the start, he had an incident. Which aptly was described as, well, yeah, I briefly saw a couple drivers... hit each other and spun like pirouettes perfectly into turn one dropping down the order and having to rejoin safely unfortunate for them not even sure what happened there Eric Neville has been on the rear bumper of Nicholas Mazza for quite some time. It has not changed much, though. The Pax Oceani Potato Pop. I don't even know it. It's a lot. It's a lot of peas. As JD Daniel makes up another position off of Tyler Kern. Going ahead there, and that is now only seven positions lost. He is leading the pro class championship standings right now so all mitigation of points loss getting back up there in the top 10 would be the most beneficial thing for him and he looks to be doing that with some ease as dom ford is now right behind eddie layton Dylan Maroney is going in the pit lane to serve his mandatory pit stop. This is lap 18. I said it was going to be lap 18, but we have drivers still out there. Looks like Trey Mistak is on track in sector two. Now to put things in some perspective, and looks like uh, Jacob Simmons is, is going to be able to join this fight as he is, was a couple more tenths off and now finding his stride. Chris Schierling is in P5. And he is in Sector 3. Tyler Tier is going to make a move here on Chaz Mizuko. And uh, that's Shady Daniel there in the background. And Tyler Tier gets ahead of Chaz. 
And JD Daniel on the exit looks to be having a move down and complete on the straight, possibly. Yes, it is, as Chaz slots in there and doesn't make it that difficult. Eric Nibble giving a little, a little sniff to the inside, but doesn't do it. As they uh, are going to battle it out here, as Jacob Simmons is going to get in this fight. One miscalculation for Eric could see him having to defend against Jacob Simmons. It's a strong defense. It looks almost like they almost came to contact there. Chaz. Chaz Mizuka might have had a spin. Uh, lost several positions. Tyler Anderson on Tyler Kern as he gets him onto the inside line there. The battle of Tyler. Tyler Tier, Tyler Anderson, Tyler Kern all next to each other. And is this going to go to Tyler Anderson? He's still got a second to make up on Tyler Tier. The battle of the T's, everybody. Right there in 14, 15, and 16. We don't even know what class Trey Misak is in. Nicholas Massa goes into the pit lane to serve as mandatory pit stop. Interesting choice for him. He's going to be the first one in the top 10 to do it. Now Jacob Simmons is going to have to battle it out there. Alex Othen making a position on Nicholas Massa, who's still in the pit lane. He's got about another 10 seconds to go here. Where does that stack up with Dom Ford and James Pierce? And it looks like Dom just almost gives that to James as they are going to head through the start straight finish. Nicholas Mazza is definitely back out there. And Nicholas Mazza is already into that straight onto sector one. So James Pierce actually not that far behind. That's going to be very difficult for Chris Chitterling. And there, and Nicholas Mazza is in P13 at this moment in time. Tyler T. Uh, Anderson. Can he make a move on Tyler Tier? He's up nine positions. Where is Tyler Tier in this, by the way? And that is two pro ams behind Tyler Anderson, who's in the. Uh, Orange accent pro category. And it is not stated if Tyler Tier is in either kidney category, actually. But he is P15. And he's holding his own. Probably be a pro-am right now. He's doing pretty well. Some lap traffic to go here. Ooh. Tyler Anderson. A little bit closer this time around. Is he going to go for the dive on the inside line? No, he doesn't. He stays... Optimal passing spot there on what I believe is a uh, turn five. Trey missed that going in. Service mandatory pit stop. Jacob Simmons and Erica Neville stay out. Does Chris Chittering stay out? Chris Chittering stays out. John Javecki stays out. Alex Othen stays out. What is Charles Whedon going to do? He's going to stay out. That is his teammate, Chris Chittering, in P3 at the moment. And we have Brandon Renfro out. Jeff Poffel out. Peter Flanner staying out. He's now in P10. Eric Koonsman is in. Okay, so P9 for Trey Mistak. What really matters is Nicholas Mazza, who was P3 in the overall and he is just behind 
uh, not that far difference. 5.2 seconds back on P1. Probably a two second difference because he was three seconds. Actually, no, he wasn't. Whoever was in P2. Actually, it was Nicholas Baza. Uh, the gap has formed even longer. <laughs> That's going to be a, a hard one to crack. It's JD Daniel now almost two positions difference from where he started this race. He's got to go in the pit lane and a few drivers will be able to capitalize off that. But you got this odd set of events of James Pierce and Dom Ford who pitted on lap 11 with a 33 and a 32 pit stop Brandon Renfro goes in. Trey Misak collects another spot. Jeff Koffeld. Now P1 through P7 have not gone in the pit lane. And this is going to be the big shift here after the pit stops. Peter Flaner up 30 positions. The start of this race now in the top 10 would be an excellent result for him if um, he comes back out and doesn't lose a significant amount of uh, positions. We won't know that just yet. Looks this looks to be a very difficult race here for uh, Chaz Mizuko, Tyler Tier, and even Brandon G. Burns. P25, 6, and 7. They've just been losing positions here. And it looks like Brandon G. Burns actually just went even there. So, good on him. Now, Trey Misak is going to collect some more. Charles Whedon not in the pit lane just yet but everyone else is there's jacob simmons he is out he has not gone in the pit lane yet charles whedon has not gone in the pit lane yet uh eric neville is coming out he's gonna be not too far behind but where's nicholas mazza there he is and he is ahead and just by three tenths looking at their uh pit stops yeah three tenths that was a separator there. Nicholas Mazza with a 33.7. Eric Neville actually had a faster pit stop with a 33.4, but had that three tenths difference on the exit uh, of the pit lane exit. And we're still gonna see Jacob Simmons be a contender for this. these two drivers that are fight, face, uh, facing off right now. That's gotta be one belter of a lap for uh, Jacob Simmons here, who's still not gone in the pit lane. That is something else. What is Charles Whedon gonna do? He's got a couple more corners and we'll just see by his determination to continue or go in. We're on lap 25 of 33 and he goes in. Trey Misak goes by. He was already right there on his heels. You can see him, he's even faster on that exit there. Now, Chris Schirling hit it on lap 23. The drivers of James Pierce and Don, uh, Dom Ford hit on lap 10. Their strategy was to get out in open air, not be around this driver. And it didn't end up working out for them. Chris Schirling actually got ahead of one of the drivers, and now both of them are behind. JD Daniels coming, uh, who is gone in the pit lane is in p14 with christopher daniel his his teammate oh wow he's back out there that is that's unfortunate he lost a lot a lot of positions lost there for him that's some 
but a good recovery for JD Daniel, who's now only five positions lost after the pit stop. Peter Flanner is just ahead, and he's got Brandon Renfro ahead of him. Three tenths difference there. Closest drivers on track to each other right now. He gets ahead. It's 23, 27 positions gained for Peter Flanner. Who's now got a couple more seconds to go where he could actually get in 3.3 seconds to get into the top 10. And he could even see those drivers ahead of him. Charles Whedon is two tenths up. Uh, two seconds up. Matt Benson is lap traffic, so he will move out of the way to make that a little bit easier for these drivers. Down Ford on the exit there. Wraps by and gets past Steve McAllister. Jeff Hoffel as well. And where is that actually? Down Ford's down to P9. And James Pierce is in P6. Not quite sure what happened there. John Jabecki and Alex Othen are out there. And they're 7 and 8. So they gained one position each. Um, from when they, from the, from the pit stops. Not sure where they gained that though. Ooh! I think that was a little love kiss to Brandon Renfro. Ooh. Eric Kuzman might have crashed. Not sure about that one. Some lap traffic moving out of the way. Fairly good. Jeff, uh, Jeff Lubitsch is towing. And this battle is getting really spicy. You have Tyler Anderson, P15. J.D. Daniel here in 14, Brandon Renfro in 13. It looks like he's going to be able to get by him, though, into turn 5. And he gets by, and that's another position gain there for J.D. Daniel. Stemming the bleeding. Only four positions lost, lost from the start of this race. What an impressive drive for this driver so far. Even Tyler Anderson here, who's only down five from the start of this race. Ooh. A little bit of a spin. And he's going to have to get back out there. And Dylan Maroney's definitely going to get by. And so he had to repass one driver to get back up to Brandon Renfro. And while I wasn't paying attention, Jacob Simmons is only 2.7 seconds back from Trey Mistak. Nicholas Mazza in P3. Eric Neville in P4. These two were already where they were after the pit stops, but it looks like Jacob Simmons' belter of a lap where he put it in, got it into the pits. He did a 30.5 in the pits. Everyone else did 33, so he definitely did not uh, put in a lot of gas there. And that was definitely a gamble, and it worked out for him. That's six positions gained for him. Benson and Steve McAllister are pretty close at the moment in time. Steve McAllister up four positions from where he started. Matt Benson down two. He also pit on lap nine. So is he going to be able to make it to the end of this race on lap 28 of 33? Over to Tyler Tier, who's going to be able to swing around the outside of Craig Carroll. Make a move. Not even sure if that's for class position, but Craig Carroll in the blue accent, <laughs> not light blue, <laughs> the, uh, the league owner's uh, little modification to the AM class uh, livery. 
<laughs> I approve. Uh, <laughs> Peter Flanner. Now close to Charles Reed and all that traffic is split between them. JD Daniel also on the heels of Peter Flanner, four tenths back. And just ahead is Don Ford and Jeff Coffold also battling it out. And they're in the top ten. Peter Flanner sends it down that inside line, gets through. Can J.D. Daniel also make this happen? That's going to be two drop down for Charles Whedon, and he does get by. Two down in one corner. That's an unfortunate drop for Charles Whedon, but he's still up four positions gain at the start of this race. Eric Neville and Nicholas Mazza are battling it out. James Pierce and Chris, Chitt uh, Chris Chittling are also battling it out. There's Christopher Roberts sliding by for a... Uh, kind of curious what that means. Uh, <laughs> and Cooper McCoy down in P27. Oh. Andrew Korstecki. P26, 27, 28. All drivers in the pro... A pro-am and then pro-class. Definitely not in the right positions from the start of this race. They definitely probably collected in that turn one incident on lap one, maybe. We got four laps to go. Cooper McCoy gets by Andrew Korsecki. Nope. And is this going to be a move for Mark Foley? They're going to go side by side, maybe. Yes, they are. And that is Cooper McCoy. Uh, one drop down for him. Mark Foley gets by. Down forward in P12 at the moment. Ooh, it's on the... Yikes! What a save, though. Only lost two positions there. That was Peter Flanner and J.D. Daniel who got by. I mean, now that's only two drop for J.D. Daniel from the start of this race. He might be able to get himself back in the top ten. He's got Peter Flanner up now 29 positions. And Jeff Coffold ahead. Between Jeff and Alex Othen is a 9.8 second gap. I don't believe he's going to get any more out of this race Peter Flanner but even getting to P9 would be something getting the top 10 after starting in almost plumb last for uh, Peter Flanner JD Daniel in that uh, turn one incident for sure clawing back his positions after spinning around on the opening lap now over to Eric N Neville who's got Nicholas Mazza in his sights with three laps to go can he make a move Jacob Simmons has an actual good distance to these drivers ahead, uh, behind him. That's uh, Colin Gear going by. Chris Schittling and James Pierce are going to join this battle till the end of the race, with two laps to go. Palpable to see which driver is going to win out on this one, or is it going to stay this way till the end? This is three, four, five, and six. As they almost make contact, Chris Schittling and Eric Neville. And JD Daniels even closer than ever. Dom Ford right there wanting to join this party. Another four battling it out. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. As we're looking at JD Daniel and the Pax Oceani. Uh, it's not silly gooses, is it? Ronnie and Clyde. Pax Oceani, Ronnie and Clyde. Sorry. Nothing to gain just yet, but James Pierce is closer to Chris Schittling than anywhere else on the track. And good defense for him. 
if they are going to go to the final lap with four strong here and four strong at the back of the top 10 also going at it John Javecki and Alex Othen are kind of in their own league right now as the Pax Oceani Silly Gooses who get a abstain from having to battle anybody on track because they have a good gap formed all over the place with the final lap oh no one could be making mistakes here is Nicholas Maz going to be able to hold this together? It looks like he is. He's got a decent gap form to Eric Neville. And it is close. I'm going to pop over real quick as we have Trey Misak, who's going to win this race here at Barber Motorsports Park. That is P1 for him. P2 for Jacob Simmons. All the way over to Eric Neville and Nicholas Mazza. Nicholas Mazza, can he finish on that third step? It almost looks like he can. I think he does. P3 for him. Eric Neville in P4. Chris Sherling, P5. James Pierce, P6. John Javecki is going to finish P7. Alex Othen in 8. Jeff Coffold still leading this four-man pack as Peter Flanner and JD Daniels still going at it. And look at that, Dom Ford, almost there on the uh, exit, getting really close, but not close enough. Jeff Koffold get, has this in the bag, finishing P9. Peter Flanner, P10. J.D. Daniel in 11. Dom Ford in 12. Charles Whedon in 13. Over Dylan Maroney here is in P14. Tyler Anderson is going to only finish P15. Uh, Brandon Renfro in 16. Scott Weber in 17, Tyler Kern in 18, Tyler Tier in 19, Eddie Layton in 20, Chaz Mazuko behind him in 21, Craig Carroll in 22, Brandon G. Burns in 23, Kyle Howe crossing the line in 24, Eric Rodriguez in 25, Cooper McCoy in 26, Mark Foley in 27, Andrew Corey Stecky in 28, drivers still out there on uh, Eric Koonsman in 29, Forrest Holland in 30, Dave Parmer in 31, Lars in 32, Matt Benson, uh, he's done, but he's in 33. Uh, Seat McAllister, 34, Christopher Robertson, 35, Colin Gear in 36, Jeff Lubitsch in 37, Christopher Daniel out there on track, he is in 38, and Michael Charon in 39, Dustin Genovese in 40 and Blake Patterson 41 and with that said that is it Trey Mistak wins this race it was a great set of battles towards the end there and it looked like it was going to be extremely competitive right there at the end but ultimately, everyone stayed where they where they kind of landed there. Um, as I stated, I have the uh, all the different results here. You know, P sixteen is Brandon Renfro. We have P one through um, one through fifteen. I did state them. I'll move through. Maybe someone will join me. Maybe not. Uh, maybe they do. I'll give it a couple minutes here and uh, going through the lineup here. This is going to be a great result for Trey Mystic, who is fit, uh, who is sitting in P2 in the uh, Pro Class Championship. As it stands, I'm not even sure who else is um, who won which class. Nicholas Mazza truly outperformed himself in P3. Is going to finish uh, in the Pro Am winner for that class. And if we go further down, oh, Trey Mistak, what a clinic, what a performance. Uh, you performed well in practice, qualifying, and then, you know, you really outdid yourself in the race. Uh, were you worried at all in your pit stop strategy when, you know, you kind of went in on your own? Uh, I was just trying to look for some clean air 
and uh, I didn't want to pit behind traffic because that really cost me some time at Sebring last week. Um, Jacob Shore caught, caught me a lot in the pits. I think he gained four or five seconds. So uh, him coming out two seconds behind me, that was pretty worrying. I mean, yeah, very much a, a staggering thing there. I was I was quite concerned. I mean, you had five seconds on three and four, and then I was worried about Jacob Simmons there. He did decide to go out longer than everyone else, and he cut because he only had a 30.5 pit stop where everyone else was in the 33s, 34s. Really just goes to show you the difference in how much he was gaining off of you on that one. Ultimately, you had a good clean race. Uh, did you have any issues at the start of the race? when you were going, I it looked like you were out there while the, the mayhem was behind you. Yeah, I think that went perfectly for me. I looked in my rear view mirror and every car was sideways. So, I mean, well, congratulations. You maximized points for the, uh, draft punk racing goal team. Uh, you know, and you guys kind of needed it. You're, you're really sitting far back there in the team championship. I hope you guys can, uh, pull back. A little bit further and get into that that fight there as well as probably retaking p1 in the uh, pro uh standings that's uh got to be feel pretty good going into the next three races yeah it feels good uh especially with this being some bonus points for this round should put us up pretty big so feeling good about that absolutely uh thanks for joining me and while we didn't get to see a lot on track i did try to give you a highlight to shout out that we knew you existed and we're just putting in those uh, belter of laps, lap after lap. You did well. I mean, thanks for joining me. Thank you. And Jacob Simmons, congratulations on that P2 finish. Uh, hey, what a run. Uh, you were battling out there uh, against, you know, the, the likes of Nicholas Mazza, Eric Neville. Uh, ultimately, you were able to, like, extend your, uh, your run there and... I'm sure that was part of your strategy there, but a 30.5 pit stop to their 33s. I mean, it really showed, even uh, Trey Mistak had stated that he was a little concerned by how much you cut him, uh, you got him in the pits. You were about 2.7 seconds back once you got out there. Uh, was that, did that feel pretty good considering you were, you know, battling everyone else out uh, for the first stint? Yeah, I, I just, decided after lap two I, I didn't have an opportunity to get around uh eric and uh was it nicholas mazza they were battling so i just just sat behind them and saved a bunch of fuel i knew i had pace on both of them so i figured if i'd save save enough fuel and just stick right behind them i could pass them pretty easily in the pits and it worked out so yeah, it it did work out. I mean, it was a fantastic yeah. uh, thing to see. I mean, you're up six positions from the start of the race after qualifying as well. Uh, so, I mean, it's got to feel good. Got to feel good getting some points back on the board. Now these are actually bonus points. So getting the Bush's Baked Bean, it's yeah. out of the bottom of that uh, that rung on the team championship and a little oh, bit wait, more. Were we, really, were we really on the bottom? Oh, uh, you're P16 out of 17. <laughs> Uh, so we're in a points, rebuilding season. Yeah, we're, we're, we're rebuilding season. for our draft pick. <laughs> yeah, this is a rebuilding phase. Maybe recruit a, a B team to uh, <laughs> help you right. on the track. Yeah. All right. uh, seems to work out for the Pax Oceani guys, having a lot of drivers out there with them. Um, but fantastic drive. I mean, it was really great to see you did you played a strategy game and it worked out. You even had the race leader kind of w uh, worried. I think you should. Hold on to that when you go into the next race, because what you did was outperforming everyone else on that overcut, which uh, was very cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, it felt good. It's a good uh, going from I started P10 or 9 or something to P2. feels good. So Absolutely. Um, yeah. Thanks again for joining me, and uh, congratulations on that P2 finish, yeah, and I can't wait to see what uh, you do next week. Thanks, man. And that's it, everybody. Um, thank you for joining me. And uh, can't wait to see you guys next week. Next week is going to be a really big one. Um, we are going to be going to uh, the Norch Life. That's going to be Sunday, uh, the 24th. Uh, qualifying will be at 9.10 as per normal. Actually, it might be a little bit close earlier than that. We'll uh, update you on that. Uh, but it is going to be the Norch Life, and we've been having team uh, groups of 40 to 60 drivers per grid definitely come out to watch that. Uh, can't wait to see what that looks like. 
And uh, thank you for everybody that joined me in the chat. And uh, I'll see you guys next week.